Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to be going over some React best practices. I've made a video similar to this in the past, but it's been almost two years and I feel like React changed a lot since then. And um, I wanted to preface this by saying that um, not always uh, best practices should be followed. However, what I tried to condense into this list are the things that I believe that are actually very valuable for you to start doing if you're not doing, and it will actually help you while you're coding your React applications and just make you overall write better code. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. Okay, everyone. So the first best practice that I really wanted to point out to you guys is basically dividing your project, your React project into different components. Now, I know a lot of you guys already know that um, dividing your project into components is good because of organization purposes. However, that's not what I'm going to be focusing in this video. The reason for that is because I'm dividing your project into different components. It's not only useful for making your project more organized, but also it will have a direct impact in the performance of your React application. Now, not a lot of people really know that, and I believe that that's one of the reasons why um, this is a best practice that I really wanted to show you guys, because um, I feel like it is something that is constantly overlooked and it is extremely important. Now, I created this very simple uh, example over here um, in order to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. And it's basically just a simple uh, React application that is already made, right? And as you can see, it's pretty simple. It only has two components. One is the app component and another one is the child component. And this child component is extremely simple. It doesn't have anything inside of it. The only thing that includes inside of it is um, like an empty div with nothing um, and a console log, which basically counts the amount of renders, um, like the amount of times this component has rendered. Now, this isn't the point of the video, but um, a little tip for you guys. If you want to count and console um, the amount of times a component is rendering, you can actually use the console.count method that comes with JavaScript and it will um, automatically do that for you. So that's a little like really cool thing that you can do. Now on the app component, as you can see over here, we basically have a, a project which with a very simple logic. And what this project does is, as you can see, there's a text in the screen saying simple text. And there's also a button called change color. And when you click on the change color button, the color for the text turns red if it was black, and it turns black if it was red. Now, the way we did this is pretty simple. Um, as you can see, we created a state called color, and it basically represents which color the text should be right now. Initially, it is black. And then we have um, our h1 tag, which is our text. And we just use the inline styling to define the color to be equal to um, whatever the value of the state is. Then for the button, when you click on the button change color, it basically just sets the color to be equal to red, if the color is currently black, and black, if the color is not equal to black, meaning that it's red. So this is very simple logic. But um, I wanted to point out something important for you guys. The child component over here has nothing to do with um, this whole logic over here, right? Imagine that this is a part of your website. And this the child component over here um, was a completely different part of your website, which had no logical relation with whatever is happening over here. So technically, imagine that this state over here should only impact this part of the, the, the website, but should have no impact on the child component. And technically, by the looks of it, it doesn't, right? Because you don't even call the this state inside of the child component. So it technically shouldn't be impacting it, it like whatsoever, right? But that's wrong. As you can see over here, if I inspect element and I go to the console log, initially, uh, that console.count that I mentioned will console log the number one, right? Because every time you refresh your page, it should re like render the component once. But now, every time I click on the change caller, it will keep re-rendering the child component. So the change in the value of a state, which has nothing to do with this component, is causing it to re-render, which is something completely not ideal, because imagine if you have a lot of different components, then all of those components would be basically being re-rendered for absolutely no reason. And this affects the performance. Now, the reason why this is happening is because we created this state in a component which calls the child component. 
So every change in this state over here will trigger a re-render on this component because you're changing the state of this component. So technically React has no way to know that um, it won't be useful for this component specifically. So the way to fix that would be dividing your project into different components based on its logic. So for example, one thing we can do is we can create a change color component over here and um, just put all of the logic for changing the color inside of here. So all of the logic that existed in the app component, we just transferred it into a change color component and just made it simply inside of here. Now the changes are minimal, but look what happens every time I change the color, right? Let's open the console and let's see if it will keep triggering every render. Now, obviously the first render appears, but now every time I change the state, it won't be triggering a render of the child component because the state was created inside of a different component. Now, this um, might seem simple and not even that useful for beginners. However, I would say this is important to keep in mind. I would say this is a best practice that you should be taking into account because it can negatively impact the performance of your project, which in my opinion should be one of your number one priorities. So with that in mind, this is the first best practice that I wanted to talk about in this video. Okay, everyone. So the second best practice that I want to present to you guys is using fragments to your advantage. Now, this is kind of a beginner concept, but I see a lot of people still committing the same mistake. So I decided to create this simple example over here, which I took from one of one of the videos that I made recently where I recreate the Wordle game. So if you want to check out that video, you can check that out. Um, but I'm just using the code for that. And somewhere in this code, you can see that we're, we're basically asking something like this. We're asking if the game is over, then I want to render some components called game over. But if not, I want to render these two pieces of information over here. These two things are different elements from HTML, right? One of them is an H1 tag saying play game, and the other one is a button saying play game. Now, you might ask, why did you put a div around this? Well, the reason why I did that is because React doesn't allow you to have um, sibling um, elements like this when you are um, either returning a function or just returning um, directly from a conditional statement like this. You need to have something around these two things over here. Now, what I had before was a diff, and you might ask, okay, but not, not everything is wrapped around something, right? Well, technically it is, right? Everything you put inside of the, the first div when you return in your component is, um, is siblings of each other, but because there is a div wrapping everything around. Now, you can either put a div like I did over here to make both of them go together, or you could use what is known as a fragment in React. And a fragment is basically like a div or any other HTML element, but there's no text inside of it. So it's just like an empty um, tag like this, right? An empty element. Now, the reason why you, uh, you it is preferable for you to use a, a fragment in situations like this is because the div was not necessary, right? We just used it um, so that we could put both of these elements one next to each other in this specific piece of our code. Now, the advantage of using a fragment is that it doesn't create an extra node in your DOM. So in your actual DOM, uh, which for, for those who don't know, it's the document object model, your, your UI, the like the whole HTML of your page, you're not creating an extra node in it to sustain that div. And with this, it's just a syntax sugar to make it work for us. And um, creating an extra node uh, probably won't have that much of an impact. However, it will just make your, your DOM heavier, right? And there's no reason for it since you can just put something like this. Not to mention, you also can have some CSS implications if you add a div because every HTML element comes with some preset CSS. So overall, I would just say putting a, a, a tag like this, a fragment like this would be a better option. Okay, everyone. So the third thing I want to talk about is the relation between states and objects. And what I mean by that is, um, there's a lot of difficulties in the beginning, uh, when you're learning react, uh, in relation to when should you create a state, which is an object containing various fields, 
or separate those fields into different states. This is a doubt I see a lot of people having, and I personally had it for a very long time until I took the time to actually research about it, and that's what I wanna explain in this video. So you can see there is uh, certain situations where you might encounter this issue. One of them is the following. So imagine you have a form, right, in your, in your website, and it has a bunch of inputs uh, representing a user, right? Now, there's three inputs. There's the name, the age, and the email. So there's two different ways of getting that information and putting it into a state. The first one is by creating a, like a, a state called user and it being an object containing a name, an age and an email. And then when you go to the inputs for each specific input, for example, this one is for the name, you just set the user state to be equal to um, the same, like all, remain the same for all of the other inputs, but for, for all the other fields, but the name field where you just set the value of the input to be equal to that, right? So technically, uh, what I'm saying here is that you're just changing the name field to be equal to this input. And then you do the same thing for the age field for the age input, and the same thing for the email field um, for the email input. Now, the, the purpose of this is to keep track of what the user is typing on this form and storing it into a state which is an object called user. Now, as I mentioned, there is another way of doing this. The other way is separating the fields into three different states, as you can see over here. Uh, we have a state called name, one called age, and one called email. And now when we go to the inputs, instead of saying set user and changing the name field, we just say set name and set it equal to with the value of the input. And we do the same for the age and the same for the email. Now, what I wanted to point out is which one is more correct, right? Which one is the best practice? So the bottom line is that it depends, right? So um, I'm going to quote cool React on, on the, the actual React team for this one. Um, basically, it says that they recommend to split the states into mo like a state into multiple state variables based on which values tend to change together. So in this case over here, it is very likely that um, the values for name, age and email will keep changing together because um, this is a form, right? So from my understanding, a situation like this over here um, would actually not be uh, completely advisable because um, whenever we made it make a change to the name, the the name field, for example, then the age field would be reevaluated, not just the age field, but the state as a whole. So we would be impacting the age uh, value um, or just reevaluating the age value even when we're making a change to the name or the email. Now, is that a big problem? Well, it is recommended against by the React team. However, it is not that big of an issue, right? Uh, with everything in programming, there's not a straight answer. You need to evaluate the, the benefits and the negatives. So in this case, the benefits uh, of just separating into each individual state like this is performance enhancement. And that is pointed out by the React team. However, um, the difficulty is that if you have um, many components and it's a big project, you might expect that it will become kind of clustered and you might be it might be hard to maintain because of the amount of uh, different states that you're creating. Now, this depends on you. Um, I've built bigger projects in the past. And what I usually do is this over here. And I do find it easier to do it uh, in a single object. However, I do think that the performance uh, like benefits outweigh the cost. So I would, in my opinion, recommend doing it this way. So the last thing I really want to talk about is related to type checking in your code. So um, there's two different ways for you to to check the types of your variables in React, um, just in JavaScript as well uh, as a whole. Uh, the main way is by actually not using JavaScript and using TypeScript. But I could come here and recommend to you guys that you just use TypeScript. But I know that a lot of people won't because it is technically a different language, although it's extremely similar to JavaScript, um, you do have to, to learn a lot of stuff. So um, I will not say, say that I'll say that in every single situation, you should be checking the types at least of your props. And um, you don't need TypeScript for that, you can actually use something that is built into react called prop types. And what do I mean by that? Well, I came up with this example over here, where we have this little project, right, where we have a component called child. And this component passes in um, a couple props, um, as you can see over here. And there's uh, four different props, but they are of different types. One is a string, um, the other is a number, another one is, is a string as well. And the final one is a Boolean. So 
we need to find a way to prevent that we accidentally pass a, a value to this props with a different type than what it's supposed to be. So for example, we, if we passed a number over here, it shouldn't be allowed, it should log us an error so that we are aware. And it's easier for us to debug later on when we have uh, a lot of different components, and we're working in a react project that is bigger than the one I'm showcasing to you guys. And the way we do this is we, we go to the component where we, we have we accept the props such as a child one. And we basically define the prop types and prop types, as I mentioned, is something from um, react. It already comes with it, you don't need to install it. Um, I have a video in it, you can click on the card up here, if you want to see it, um, I go over exactly what prep tests are, but I'll just give a very clean, like really quick explanation of what it is. Basically, you grab the component, which is accepting the props, you give it um, some prop types, and then you just set it equal to and you define the field for every single um, prop that you're receiving. So for example, name, I'm setting it to be equal to a string type um, from the prop types library. Uh, age is a number, email is a string, and is married is a bool. There's a lot of different ones you can choose. Like I'll click over here. I could put for example, uh, I can just write, let me just think of one um, array of you can define arrays, for example, you can say it's an array of numbers, you can say a lot of different stuff. And this will basically just as I mentioned, prevent you from passing um, like different types, uh, like the wrong type for a prop. Now, why is this important? It's not something that will make your app run faster or your user experience be better to some extent. Um, it's more about you developing, right? When you're coding, you need to make sure you you set yourself up for success, prevent the most, uh, pre prevent you from spending hours debugging something that could have easily been solved if you just did something like this. Um, if you accidentally have an error or your project is not working well, um, it might be because you're passing the wrong type to the wrong prop. So um, having something like this is a layer to prevent this from happening. I'll show you how this will actually help us uh, how this will notify us. So for example, uh, if I came over here, and I passed um, an age that is a string, right? Um, if I open up the project, and I open the console log, you'll see that the console will now give us an error saying exactly what the issue is. Now it's just a console log, it's a warning. But it already gives us um, some sort of notification for us to know where the problem is so we can fix it, right. And if I re undo this, and I make this into a number again, you'll see that um, the error isn't logged anymore, because now we're passing the correct types. So this is it for prop types. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please have a like down below and comment what you want to see next. I actually decided to double the amount of videos I'm going to be posting. Um, although it's going to be a lot of work. I, I realized that I need to do this uh, in order to help the channel grow. So um, I'll do as much as I can. I'll post twice a week, which is something I wasn't doing. And I I really need video ideas, guys, like just leave some video ideas on the comments if you're interested. Um, I'll try to make as much as I can. Because um, I'm also a university student. So it's always pretty hard for me. And it's also the my final season right now. So I'll start studying for my finals and I need to pass my courses. But um, anyways, uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm going to be posting twice a week and I would massively appreciate it. And I see you guys next time. <laughs>